there, Dolly and many friends. I'm so happy that you came back today. If you didn't see the video I put out yesterday, Wednesday, about the pottery, beautiful art pottery I received from Lisa at Miniature Things by Lisa, please be sure and go check that out. Uh, this week, I was working on creating a screen for little Gertrude. I think there ought to be some privacy there while the bathtub is being used, don't you think? So I don't wanna waste another minute. I wanna get right into showing you what I did. First, I was going to just trace the elements of this old broken screen that I had, but it the dimensions ended up being larger than I wanted. You can see I wrote three by eight there and that's centimeters, and it just ended up being too big. This box that Jolene sent me, I wanted to use that upper element there um, for the top of the screen. So what I ended up doing was just making a template on this piece of cardboard here. And yeah, you can see I'm tracing this here, but I don't end up actually using it. It was just too big. So I just kind of made my own drawing. And then when I got to the top, so the bottom there, I just kind of did that on my own. And when I got to the top, I just traced the top of the box there to get that little element that I wanted. So then I just cut that out and I'm going to transfer the shape times three onto the wood pieces that I have. <clears throat> now I bought a stack of basswood pieces. I think they were 10 pieces of 12 by 12 and they have come in so handy. I think I got them on Amazon. I can't remember a really good price. Um, but yeah, I have, it's just the pieces are lasting forever. Now I'm not looking forward to cutting this out. It is a little bit difficult to cut this wood. It's really, really tough in some places because they're layers glued together. Um, yeah, but I'm going to try a little technique that I saw my friend Lisa use at Little Worlds of Wonder. Oh my gosh, if you don't know her channel, go check it out. She has a great channel. So here it all is, and one of the things she does is she uses a little awl to poke some little holes to make it easier to cut along curved edges. So I put lots of little holes in here and along the bottom as well. I just used, a, I used the needle tool along the bottom to just scrape, and I did a lot of scraping of the edges. So almost using it like a pen. And then I went back over and cut the pieces there. Now these are straight lines, so they were a little bit easier. The curved lines are gonna be harder. And that, that bit, I got a little impatient with that one. And I'll just sand that off and cut it a little bit. So what I did here was I used my needle tool to just trace along the dotted lines that I created here. Um, and if you watch me do it, you'll be glad that I'm not you know, a tattoo artist. But a little bit time consuming, and you definitely need your patience pants, right Jolene? I always hear your sweet little voice in my head when I'm doing one of these kinds of tasks. But I got it done, and oh my gosh, it goes so much faster in time lapse. It's just so much more convenient that way. And then I'm using my um, X-Acto knife to just trace and cut. <clears throat> Once I did the first one, uh, the rest of them went faster. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was just the positioning. So there's the pieces. Are they perfect? No, of course they're not perfect. Have you been watching my channel? <laughs> and then the sanding, which is boring to watch, but I always find it kind of satisfying to get it done. It really brings your piece to life. And then I use this little file to get in and shape the curved edges a little more. And then I use this file that my friend Becky sent me to shape the bottom a little more. So I spent quite a bit of time sanding and they, to me, it just brings them to life a little bit more, makes it a little less rough. 
So yeah, there's my pieces. So what my plan is, let me tell you, I have a bag full of these cutouts. I got these cutouts. I have many, many. They're Victorian style from a company called Mamlock. And I will put a link to their shop in my description box. And I'll also show you a picture of their website right here. Um, this was an alphabet set with little animals. So you can cut out the different elements. And I've had these for years and I just love their products. So they print these cutouts um, using actual Victorian images and they have so many different choices, but I'm just showing you a few of the ones I have. This is a beautiful one. I think this is supposed to be a fan. So you can decoupage it onto a piece of wood and make an old fan. Aren't they beautiful? And you could use them for so many things. But I have these paper doll pieces and I thought because I wanna make this a whimsical, fun, not stuffy screen, I thought I would decoupage some of this gold tissue paper onto the wood and then put the doll, the paper doll cut out over it. And then where the face is supposed to be, I wanna use a mirror. So I have these mirrors that my friend Becky sent me and it says they're, that you, they can be cut. So I didn't know quite how that's gonna work, but I'm gonna try it out and I'm going to see if I can get it done. But I also, for the, I'll show you the back side. I cut these, this is a print of, a, of an old image that was in my doll magazine and I cut out the pieces from this image and thought I might use those on the back. I just really wanna do something fun and different and this is what I wanna do. So I'm just trying to get an idea of how big I need to cut that mirror and I think I'm going to use that size. So it says, yes, they have a film on them, but it says they can be cut. So I thought I could get two of them out of one mirror because I want to preserve these mirrors. Um, I only have a few of them that she sent me. Thank you, Becky. I am just using all my things that you sent me. And I'm just giving it a try here. And yes, so it's plastic. I didn't even realize that the mirror was plastic and it cuts like a kind of thick piece of plastic. So I'm just using a little antique wax to color the wood here. And that's just to give a little background. I think I, what I like to do is layer the elements of whatever I'm doing so if I sand it or age it or something comes off. You don't just see that light colored basswood that is so telling of contemporary times. So I think that any any kind of base, under base, a darker color, wood color, gives a nice base for whatever you're doing, even if you're decoupaging over it. So here I go, and the reason I traced out the mirrors there is so that I could leave those open for gluing them down. So I'm just adding my tissue paper there and going around, and this type of project, you don't need to be super careful unless that's the type of look you're going for. If you want it perfectly neat, you can cut it out perfectly, but I don't do anything perfectly, so it does not serve me well to even try. And I'm just using the Mod Podge as glue to glue the mirrors down. And you see my idea there. And I did take the film off. And then I'm just cutting, I glued the paper dolls there and I cut, trim them off. So this is the reverse side of the screen. I, the other side is gonna be the main side. And these I did kind of cut a little bit to size there. They'll have to be trimmed. So that's my thought. And here they are. And what I did was I went back and used a gold Sharpie to go around the edges so that it doesn't look like they're just cut and pasted, that it has a little more depth to it. And now I'm aging with just a little watered down brown paint. 
So I really like the look of the layers of all these different elements going over and over again. I think it adds. So what I did there was I'm trying to age the mirrors just a little bit. Uh, I did watch someone do that, but I didn't really want to go back and watch a video again. So what I did was I just used my Mod Podge with some black chalk pastel and I just dabbed it on. <laughs> You're barely going to notice it, but I thought it gave the look that I wanted. So after the wash dries, I'm going to put a thin coat of Mod Podge on top uh, just to preserve it and blend it and add another little layer. And I'm really liking the way that they're looking. I had lots of options of how to do the screen and I decided to go with my whimsical, unexpected plan and I'm really happy with it um, and I think the dolls are going to like it. I did age the hinges a little bit. Now I am very bad with hinges because I am not so careful when gluing and aging to keep the middle piece, the bendable part of the hinge, uh, free from glue and other products. So. It doesn't work terribly well. Um, I really would like to find a better way to do it. I think what I really need to do is just practice. So I cut the heads off these head pins and I just glued those on where to indicate nails. Um, I don't know, next time if I do another screen, which I think I definitely will because it was a really fun, quick project, I think that I might use a fabric hinge. I'm just really, I can't get myself used to these hinges. So you experience miniaturists out there. If you have some hints, I already know to be careful of gluing the hinge, but please let me know if you have some better hints or hinges. I have like 200 hinges. So here's the screen in the room here and I'll show you a few this was nighttime so I I just wanted to hurry up and show you and here is the reverse side but we'll come back to it during the daytime and yeah Gertrude is still in there I think it works nicely we can drape a towel over it um, yeah, I think it's it's exactly kind of the size I was going for. I didn't want something too large, just enough to cover that doorway there and give a little privacy. Let's open the nursery door and see if there is indeed privacy. I think there is. I can't see Gertrude. And here's the screen from the back. I like both sides. I can't decide which one I like better. Which side do you like better? Once again, thank you so much for stopping by to see what I've made. Of course, there's lots more things in store, so please come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard. Good grief. Come on.